So we worked out some math that allowed me to achieve the. See, we're working on parallel mass. He, there's only one thing that can swallow and control a fusion containment explosion at the black hole. It swallows the sun. What is the sun? Billions of H-bombs going off. So anyway, the, that was um, how I got help with, with on mathematics of that. But the way the engine works, it's on the same principle of a balloon. You blow up a balloon, release it, and it goes around the room. The air escapes out the nozzle, pushes the balloon forward. Well, the same principle with this engine. When you open up the one end of the field with a plasma beam to open up the part or, uh, particle chambers, uh, you're going to get all this matter flowing out. The matter is moving light. So, Newtonian law takes over in space. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, just like the balloon. When this engine turns itself on, eventually the vehicle is going to catch up with the speed of the exiting matter out the tailpipe. How fast is it going? 186,000 miles a second, speed of light. This engine's capable of speed, light speed. And we had it in 1971. So. But you knew that it was going to be put to uh, potential uh, catastrophic results. <laughs> Not potential, for sure. They were planning to do first strike. And they had planned on doing first strike for about the last 15 years. So the Soviet Union collapsed. They were always trying to beat the, the mad equation, mutual sure destruction. The only way to do it is to be there first. Everybody had the same speeds. So whoever got faster wins. And, uh, so what I'm asking is, why, why are you starting to go public with this information? Um, there's a shift, a change in, in perception of the public and the attitude. Uh, if it hadn't been for that, I, I would have went to my grave and never said a word about this because I wanted a normal, you know, mainstream life career. Uh, like I'm going to tell people, uh, yeah, I'll stand on top of an alien engine in the basement of a top secret base called Area 51, uh, mainly because I built an engine similar to it and it landed there and that's why they wanted me there. And I was 17 years old at the time. Um, never, despite, uh, despite the fact that I won the most outstanding field of engineering sciences from the United States Air Force in 1971 and we can see newspaper stories and clippings of me and that rocket. So, um, I wouldn't, still wouldn't stand a chance. So I decided, no, I'm not saying a word. I saw a lot of people take tremendous criticism in the 60s and the 70s, but then there's been a shift in the last 20 years. Uh, the American public now really believes there's somebody else out there. And if somebody would land here right now, the American public would go, cool, as long as they're not trying to blow us away or eat us up or something, there's no problem. Um, what they will be a problem is, is that if the federal government's caught lying, which they, I know they are lying, they've been lying for f probably since 1971, that I know for sure. So if they've been lying, then Roswell is very likely it's true. So they've been lying 50 consecutive years and probably much longer than that. The engine I saw did not come from the Roswell crash. The engine I saw was as big as the Roswell craft. So this is something even bigger. That's so another one. So how many do they have? How much they got? You know, that's where the real problem is. Who shot King? Who shot, you know, Senator um, Kennedy? You know, and, and and JFK. If they're lied this much to us, that's where the danger is. Is that if it comes out, it's not so much as the public's going to panic that there's alien life out there. No, it's going to be anarchy because people are going to be so ticked off with D.C. for lying so many years. Uh, that's where, that's what, that is what the government fears. They do not fear you being violent about, hostile about aliens landing and we're going to go crazy. No, they're going to freak out because they're going to be caught in about a five-decade lie. And that's why they put out the most ridiculous story. Yeah, we take these dummies and drop them from weather balloons. Honest God, come on, y'all, just the average guy working in a plant, making a living, trying to pay his bills, raise his family, he's going to look at that and go, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and, that, and the polls are showing that. So that's why I said it's pretty safe now to say something. Not only that, people made Independence uh, Day, the, the movie, and they were talking about Area 51, and I was looking at it closely, and 
somebody in Area 51 talked to the people who made the movie because they were, it, the, the dimensions, the way the walls were shaped, there was some stuff they missed, but it was correct. So I figure if they can let that out, and they didn't, they're still here, and then uh, the attitude shifting, um, it's just one thing after another, the public's attitude, perception, I can, I can come out forward now and take the heat from critics, but I couldn't take the heat from the general public because you just got to live with them. Uh, critics are always going to be there. They'll, they'll be there like gravity. You can depend on it. Uh, but that's not the problem. Do you think the aliens are making themselves more apparent? Well, when I testified to a joint session of the Senate and Congress in April for uh, CSETI for Dr. Greer, uh, we have got right on to that. And uh, my question was, um, is somebody coming to dinner? And it's not Sidney Poitier, is it? You know, I, it's possible if they have cut a deal with somebody, another race or whatever, they could have reneged on the deal, and they may be en route to um, meet us, the citizens of the planet, in person. So the government's in a real pitch panic because what are you going to do? No, you can't come here. How are you going to stop them? Um, and on top of that, they, um, they're going to be caught in major lies. So they looked real panic about this situation. You know, I've been sitting on this thing for 27 years, and I didn't bother to say anything. And Dr. Greer with said he was able to get a hearing set up, and he hammered me for two months to finally, the week before the, um, the, the testimony, I finally said, I'll, I'll go. So the fact that he could get that established where he was at, Independence Day, the shift in the general public's attitude, by the time you add all this stuff up, it comes out to equal time to talk. The briefing was uh, set up by Dr. Greer with CSETI, which I think is the Center for a Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and uh, he's in Nashville, North Carolina. And, uh, and he's an MD, an ER doctor. And Dr. Greer is um, a very intelligent man. So he had set up a meeting for Congress uh, to, to, he had set up within the political structure and framework to run the UFO question right through the normal channels, which all three years I've been watching stuff, and he's the only one that got that far, and I was pretty impressed with it. So um, I finally decided to, to jump in there. He had 12 other witnesses besides myself, and um, we all testified to, to him at that time. And there was about 300 people there. There was a lot of staff there, but there was a lot of senators and congressmen. I recognized some of them. Uh, some of them I'd known before anyhow.